Welcome back to the Arborist Exam Prep Course. This is Chapter 13, Trees and Construction. Let's get right to it. Let's talk about this important topic in arboriculture, how trees interact with land development and construction, and more importantly, how to protect them during these processes. Trees provide environmental, social, and economic value, especially in urban spaces. Yet, construction damage is one of the leading causes of tree decline and death. Mature trees near development sites are highly vulnerable, but with proper planning and arborist involvement, they can be successfully preserved. Arborists play a vital role in early planning. They identify suitable trees to retain, recommend protective measures, and work with design teams to ensure that the trees survive construction and remain assets for a very long time. In order to preserve trees effectively, arborists need to be part of every development phase. Planning, designing, grading, construction, and maintenance. The earlier we're involved, the greater the chance of preserving tree health. Construction requires standards for compaction, foundation depth, and utility placement. While flexibility is limited, arborists must understand these requirements to advocate for trees in collaboration with engineers and designers. Unfortunately, construction damage often goes unseen. A lot of the times it'll affect the roots underground, and above-ground symptoms like reduced growth or dieback might not even show up for years. These impacts can send a tree into irreversible decline. The equipment can easily damage branches or bark, and proper pruning or accidental injury introduces decay and weakens tree structure. These wounds are permanent and can shorten the tree's life. Digging and trenching can sever roots, especially when close to the trunk. Losing one major root can destroy up to 25% of a tree's root system, affecting the stability and water uptake. This increases the risk of tree failure later. And soil compaction, whether it's intentional or not, severely impacts root health. Heavy equipment kills fine roots and degrades the soil structure, restricting water, air, and nutrient flow. And raising or lowering soil grades alters the delicate root zone. Removing topsoil can eliminate 90% of fine roots, while adding soil may suffocate roots if it's dense or compacted. Even minor grade changes can affect the water flow. Contaminants like paints, fuels, and concrete run off or toxic to tree roots. They can alter the soil pH and affect root uptake and kill the foliage. And removing surrounding trees also exposes interior forest trees to sun, wind, and temperature extremes, leading to sun scald or even wind throw. Preservation starts before construction begins. Trees must be evaluated early for health and structural soundness. Poor quality trees should not be preserved, they become liabilities. Tree evaluation should include species, health, structure, and ability to tolerate construction stress. Arborists must document species, size, condition, and the exact location of the trees. Photos and condition tracking help during long-term projects. Group retention is preferred. Clusters of trees provide better wind resistance and ecological value than isolated individuals. Sometimes, even small design changes like bridging over roots or tunneling for utility installation can dramatically improve survival rates. And once preservation decisions are made, the arborist develops a tree protection plan. This could include fencing, soil protection, and clear communication to everyone on site. Compliance with local regulations is key. The critical root zone is the minimum root area required for tree survival. It's not always circular and depends on site condition and species. Arborists must use biology and observation, not just formulas, to determine the zone. The tree protection zone goes beyond the critical root zone to safeguard soil and canopy. It's usually set 6 to 18 times the trunk diameter, depending on species and site. The larger the zone, the better the protection, if the space allows. Space is limited on most sites, so arborists must negotiate for tree-friendly solutions, like tunneling instead of trenching. Understanding site plans and offering alternatives helps ensure tree survival and project success. Once the plan is in place, it must be enforced. Physical protection includes fencing, signage, and monitoring. Working in the tree protection zone should be avoided or done with tree-friendly techniques. Before construction even begins, arborists may recommend mulching, irrigation adjustment, pest control, or nutrient management. Healthier trees withstand construction stress much better. 
One of the first and most important steps in protecting trees during construction is setting up the tree protection zone. This should already be defined in the tree protection plan. You want to set up sturdy fences around each tree or a group of trees to mark these zones. No gates because we don't want easy access inside the TPZ. There must be no storage, waste, digging, or compaction. Only work approved in writing under the direct arborist supervision is allowed. We also want to protect existing natural features inside the TPZ like leaf litter and native understory plants while removing invasive species. When suitable, we apply mulch to protect the soil. The next step is limiting how and where people and vehicles move on site. The fewer access routes, the better. You want to define those early. This reduces soil damage and protects roots outside of the tree protection zone. Plan ahead for equipment, soil, and material storage. Also, it's important to designate areas for concrete washout, dumping gravel, and construction activities. Be cautious because lime-based gravel and cement runoff can raise soil pH and harm sensitive trees. Keep these activities well away from the tree protection zone. Soil compaction is a major threat to tree health during construction. To reduce this, we spread 8 to 12 inches of coarse mulch like wood chips around the trees. For added protection and easier cleanup, we can place geofabric underneath. Further weight distribution can be achieved with plywood, steel plates, or trackway systems. Remember this mulch layer is temporary. It should be reduced or, or removed post-construction to avoid suffocating the root zone. Preventing compaction is always easier than fixing it later. As I said earlier, even small changes in grade can devastate a tree by severing roots, compacting soil, or redirecting water flow. If grading is necessary, the tree's survival depends largely on how much of the root system remains intact. Other factors include species tolerance, soil condition, and irrigation. If grading must occur around all sides of the tree, consider creating a tree island by building a retaining wall around it. This allows the tree to stay at the original grade, though it sacrifices roots beyond the wall. The more roots you preserve, the better the survival chances. When the grade must be raised, a vertical retaining wall or tree well may be required. Large tree wells are better. They keep fill soil away from the trunk and reduce root disruption. Avoid small diameter wells. They typically fail to protect the trees. Also, don't place fill over the gravel expecting better drainage. That can backfire, holding water in the soil layer and stressing roots. Use fill soil similar to native soil and place it directly on the original grade. Engineered fills are designed for structural support and are heavily compacted. This removes roots and discourages regrowth, reducing stability. Even if the fill won't hold a structure, the installation equipment can still cause major compaction. Use small machinery or hand tools where possible. After grading, check that water reaches the original root zone. You may need to irrigate to keep your roots hydrated. And remember, effective communication is essential. A single uninformed subcontractor can undo months of planning. That's why arborists should hold a pre-construction meeting with everybody on site. Regular site visits by the arborists are also crucial. The arborists should maintain direct contact with the superintendent and monitor all activity around the tree protection zone. Photos taken throughout the project can be valuable documentation in the event of a dispute. And once construction is complete, a post-construction care plan must be implemented. This includes regular monitoring and ongoing communication with the project manager to ensure the trees receive the care they need during the recovery. Even with the best planning, some trees may still suffer damage. Start by removing broken, dead, or high-risk limbs. Avoid outdated recommendations to thin or reduce the crown to compensate for root loss. This actually stresses the tree further. Limit pruning to essential risk reduction, especially for large, mature trees. If bark has been damaged, remove any loose pieces carefully. This is called bark tracing. Do not enlarge the wound or try to make a neat shape. This does more harm than good. Avoid applying wound dressings unless disease prevention is required. After construction, one of the best treatments is proper watering. A slow soak over the entire root zone encourages recovery. Avoid shallow, frequent watering and don't water near the trunk. If drainage has been compromised, it needs to be corrected before irrigation is applied. 
mulch continues to play a role in recovery, apply a 1-2 to two inch layer of organic mulch around the root zone, extending as far out as space allows. Avoid piling mulch against the trunk. This promotes disease. The goal is to moderate soil temperature, retain moisture, and reduce competition from grass and weeds. Correcting compaction post-construction is difficult and can cause additional root damage. When needed, use techniques like radial trenching. This is making radial lines through the root zone using air excavation tools. Avoid mechanical trenchers. Another option is vertical mulching, drilling holes filled with compost or loose soil. These methods offer limited success but are sometimes worth trying after the trees have been stabilized. Fertilizer is not recommended in the first year after damage. Root injury reduces water and nutrient uptake, and excess fertilizer can cause stress. Only fertilize based on confirmed deficiencies from soil or foliage tests. Unfortunately, some trees won't recover. Arborists must monitor for signs of stress. Cracks, lean, decay, or dieback. Changes in drainage, sun exposure, or wind patterns may also affect health. Keep an eye out for pest infestations as stressed trees are more susceptible. Monitoring should continue for several years after construction ends. Alright guys, that's the end of chapter 13. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're getting a lot of value out of these videos. Please hit like and subscribe and join me for chapter 14.